Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for an interview with an architect. Today we have Brittany. Brittany, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Brittany Suxing Dao. I am uh, practicing in the DC area. I've been working in the Washington DC area at a commercial interior architecture firm for the last three years. Um, I actually just stopped working and I am getting my master's in architecture at Virginia Tech at their Washington Alexandria Architecture Center. Um, so I get to stay in DC and attend school to get my master's. Um, uh, I am from Kansas but I did my undergraduate at Yale University where I also studied architecture, worked in San Francisco for a year before I came here. So lived a little bit of all over, but happy to be here. Wonderful. So let's just jump right into the questions. Um, what got you interested in architecture? Uh, I actually was very interested from a young age. I distinctly remember being maybe eight or nine years old and playing with Legos at after school YMCA and I had been reading this book called Gracie's Girl which is about this young girl who volunteers at a soup kitchen she meets this one this older woman and their friendship develops from there and I had been building Lego soup kitchens and <laughs> because I was inspired by this book and I, I honestly I decided in that moment I'm not quite sure how I knew of it at that age but I was like I'm gonna be an architect I want to build spaces like this for people to connect and, and hang out and do stuff. And that's, that's how it started. So it was very, very young and I haven't strayed half since I was young. I've, I did a special design program in my high school and all the way till now. <laughs> so I know you participate in our Design Like a Girl program as a mentor. What inspired you to join that program? Yeah, uh, it's, my personal experience getting exposure and interest in architecture so young um, is really what drew me to design like a girl to get to work with younger girls um, middle school age girls and and see the sparks of interest and creativity with architecture at such a young age um, and i was lucky that my high school program had a special like special design program at the school at my public school uh, and having that exposure early was really helpful for me to get to stay involved, stay motivated, stay interested in architecture. Great. Um, so what's your favorite part about being an architect? Favorite part is the people, for sure. I, I really enjoy working with clients. I, I like school, I like learning, but I really, really love working um, because having people to design for really motivates me. I love having the relationship with clients and getting to know what they want and what they need and how to build a space for them is, is really my favorite part. You get to meet a lot of really interesting people. Great. Um, so how do you see architects making a difference in the world? Uh, uh, architects, I, I really believe architects ha hold a lot of power. Um, we, we get to shape the, how people's physical spaces look and feel. It, we get to shape how long of a walk it takes for someone to get from their home to the grocery store, or and then we shape what that grocery store looks like. So there are so many ways in which architects have a hand in, in shaping um, the physical life for people. Uh, and I really think the way that we approach that allows us the, the power to make a difference. And so if we design spaces that are beautiful design spaces that are equitable or safe. Um, it really makes a difference. Great. Um, Who is your inspiration uh, when it comes to architecture? Um, I was actually stuck on this one. I, there is one architect, a Chilean architect, that I really admire his work, um, Alejandro Aravena. He does some really interesting work, and one of his projects is this half a house project. So uh, it's with affordable housing, but the, the idea is they build half of a house. They provide all the hard parts, like the infrastructure, um, the plumbing, the stairs, all of that. And they do pretty high quality work for that. And then the other half is left empty. And it allows the people who then buy, take, in, take over those homes to, to finish out the build out when and how they can with their own money. And so it's, it gives a bit of ownership um, to whoever is 
gets to have the house. And so he does some really cool work. I think that makes a, it ties back into how architects can make a difference. So he gives people the chance to shape their own spaces and um, that's really cool. Wonderful. Um, so what is one thing you think all aspiring architects should know? Uh, architecture is very challenging. <laughs> it's very hard, but I think that aspiring architects should know that there are so many different ways to be involved in architecture. Um, and it doesn't have to be in one exact specific pathway into a license or something like that. But um, if you really believe in architecture, I would say don't give up on it. They, they should know that it, there are so many ways to be involved in architecture. Great. Um, what advice do you have for kids that are interested in the field? Uh, I would say get involved early. See if you can find programs like ours, like Design Like a Girl. Um, take art classes. Take like building classes. Um, let like full reign pursue it. And I think art is actually really helpful to not um directly related but it does it is directly related in that it builds a lot of creative outlet for you um so yeah get involved pursue all the different clubs and and groups and mentorships and as you can and yeah run with it <laughs> so what do you say to uh kids that maybe you know inter be interested in the field but they they don't feel confident in math or in their drawing skills I am really, really bad at math, personally. So I can say that you don't have to be good at math to, to be able to do architecture. And drawing skills, math, just like anything, you can you practice at it. So it's not about your natural talent by any means to, to pursue architecture. Um, it's practice. So take the art classes and keep trying to draw and keep practicing math as much as you may hate it like myself, but uh, there are tools and there are ways to, to practice and get better and then find the way to do architecture that, that lets you show off your strengths. So. Great. Um, how do you think um, history impacts architecture today? Uh, it takes a, it's a very big impact. Um, our, I would say history has impacted the way that we view what architecture is like classical or what architecture is formal or what like government buildings look like. And so I think history um, sets a, sets a standard of what we think very formal architecture should look like. And so uh, unpacking some of the, the history that went into why a building looks the way it was built um, is really important. And then moving forward, knowing that we don't, there are histories that can be maintained and other histories that are not necessarily shown um, in architecture and being able to tap into that, um, which history is being shown is, is important. And then kind of going along with that, how do you see the world of architecture changing in 10, 20 years from now? It's gonna to continue to change a lot, I think, especially with technology, as technology continues to change, it's changed so rapidly in the last uh, 15, 20 something years. It's, it's changed pretty dramatically at the advancement of technology. I also think uh, with technology, it's gonna, as we probably know now, with um, this pandemic is really going to change our sense of like, scale and space and how quickly we can connect people uh, via virtually or in our physical spaces. And so I think architecture will change in a similar way. I think the scale of it will change and how people have access to each other is going to change. Um, and climate, <laughs> climate change, can't forget about that one. I think it'll change a lot in terms of how our environment is is going to sustain itself and what role architecture plays in, in helping maintain that. That's very interesting. Um, so do you have anything else you want to share with students um, 
that you think they need to know about architecture? I feel like we covered it all, but I really do think they just don't give up on it. Um, architecture can be really hard, but it also can be really exciting. And you don't have to, like we said, be good at math or good at drawing. Um, you can be really, really bad at math and be very okay at drawing, which is how I feel like I am, and still really like architecture. And I think practice and find classes to take, find people to reach out to, um, there are resources there and I think there can be more, but we're working, we're working to get it all out there. And so um, lean into support to find it um, because people are willing to help, help you get into the field. So yeah, that's kind of it. Great, thank you, Brittany. Um, so this has been Interview with an Architect. Please join us next week for another episode. Thank you. <laughs>